Hello and welcome to the second from the Aquapack basic tutorial series. Aquapack of course is an enhancement pack for Freeform Pro designed by Metal uh, that uh, is um, uh, meant to create water environments using Freeform Pro um, and uh, water textures, animated water textures. Uh, the first tutorial uh, show I showed you how you can um, uh, control the water and uh, I used the daylight project. In this tutorial I'm going to use the ocean night project and um, uh, once you open the project you will see the interface looks pretty familiar. Same kind of controls for the water controls layer. Uh, you have also a moon controls layer uh, under which you can control the moon size, the moon glow intensity and the moon glow radius. Uh, the moon glow on water is just uh, one simple glow control that affects uh, the whole image and mostly the highlights on the water that come from the moon. Then um, you will, uh, if you unclick the shy switch, you will see all the other precomps that are in the main comp. One of them is the displacement map and today we're going to look at uh, several interesting uh, ways in which you can play using this layer. Um, you will see that um, the displacement map is created by several pre-comps and several adjustment layers and uh, a couple of other layers. Um, parameters from which are linked to the water controls in the main comp. Just a side note, if you would want to um, go in and change the way the water uh, displacement map looks like um, play with the um, several the precoms here and the, the uh, adjustment layers you can do that make sure please that you <laughs> save your comp um, uh, another version of the comp uh, when you do that so you will not lose all the linking through expressions of the parameters in this comp to the main comp the water controls layers um, that being said, let's go in and um, create on top of all of this a shape layer. <clears throat> I'm going to show you, um, based on a, a very simple technique, how you can affect uh, the water. Let's say you would want to bring in a boat, um, a 3D object through Zaxworks and Invigorator Pro, or create some sort of boat like shape and shapeshifter or even Freeform Pro and um, you want that to interact with the water. Um, in order to do that you would have to create uh, an animated shape uh, over the texture uh, of the displacement map in here uh, that would interact with the uh, rest of the uh, displacement map and create the impression that an object is going through water, is splitting the water and uh, uh, it's affecting the water in this way. Obviously this can be uh, a lot more complex than what I'm going to do today. Uh, today I'm just going to give you the basic principle of it. I'll create a simple, very simple shape. It's a V-like shape. Um, and I'm going to let it have the uh, color white, 100%. Um, and um, I am going to apply several filters to it. One, uh, I'm going to apply some fractal noise and um, for the fractal type I'm going to use a subscale. Then um, I will bump up the brightness and lower the contrast. And you will see how that affects um, 
the way the displacement map works. Uh, what I'm going to do, just so you can see uh, side by side how this um, affects the displacement map, <clears throat> is I'm going to move this towards the front. I just move my anchor point to the top of the V. And um, I'm going to lock my um, main comp. And I'm going to go un in under the hood, double click on the displacement map. This will open another comp window. And drag this to the side so I can have two comp windows side by side. One, the one that is locked, which shows me the main comp. And then the second one, which shows me the displacement map. And um, if I go, since I have an animation here already, I know that if I go at about eight seconds, um, I can see closer to this area of the displacement map. And here it is. This is uh, my newly created displacement. Uh, obviously, it's a little too much. So what I can do now is um, just going to move it a little more this way so we can see it better. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to change some of the parameters in here. Um, I'll bring the contrast down and the brightness down. And you will see immediately this is how my map is affected. Um, and I will do that even more. Maybe bring the brightness a little up. It's too much. There we go. Something like that. And one more thing I want to do is add a blur on top of uh, the fractal noise. And I'm going to add a box blur. I'm going to use three iterations and a blur of th three and this will smooth out my shape now I can uh, see if I want to heighten the contrast just to give a little more randomness to the shape there we go I kind of like this now uh, what I want to do is I want to animate this to simulate the boat coming from uh, far away towards the camera. So I'm going to go to my first frame and set up a key frame in uh, my shape, transform, and position. I'm going to position this up here. Just going to rotate it a little more towards me. And Change my anchor point to the tip of the, of the V shape. <clears throat> and then I'm going to set up a keyframe for the position here. Then go at about eight for, uh, seconds and animate my whole shape. Make it come towards the camera. And there it is. Whoops. And this is a good place where I can see it. So now I have the shape moving over my displacement map. The next thing I want to do is I want to also animate what happens inside the shape. So I'm going to animate the fractal noise. And under transform, I'm going to set a keyframe, the beginning at for offsetting the turbulence then I'm going to go to eight seconds and just offset my turbulence as such and that'll give me some nice movement inside and that is basically it now if I want to preview this I'm just going to close this comp Go back to my main comp and 
moment, I will do a RAM preview. All right, so um, this is how the render will look like. You can look in this area and you can see how we have a nice displacement of the water simulating how a boat or some sort of sharp pointy object can affect the surface of the water. And as I told you before, this can be uh, done a lot better with a lot more detail. Um, and I'm sure you guys can take it from here and, and do uh, some incredible things with it. But that's uh, the basics of it. Now the second thing uh, I wanted to show you is uh, how you can do, uh, based on a more uh, practical <laughs> approach, let's say, how you can, um, for example, say, uh, have a logo come out of the water. And in order to do that, uh, you will affect both the displacement map and the water texture map. And uh, I'm going to go back into the displacement map project uh, comp, I'm sorry, and uh, turn off the shape layer. And then um, I'll just create uh, basically a text logo, something very simple. Um, I'll just even call it logo. Um, and position this right here. And then I'll go back and do the same thing as I did before. Um, you will see now that uh, it appears already in uh, the displacement map since uh, the text already has some uh, light and dark values in it, even if it's color. Um, the, in the displacement map is interpreted as in light and dark values. So um, what I'm going to do is lock this comp and uh, again open a different window uh, for my displacement map and I'm going to go again to about eight seconds and uh, I'm going to position my logo in such a way where I can uh, see it best see it and um, what I'm going to do with the text here is just uh, uh, convert it to uh, take the color out and just bring only shades of gray uh, in it there we go and now you can uh, better see how the text is affected and of course you can just play with uh, gray levels and you can get different looks to it but for now um, I'm just gonna let uh, leave this like that and I will show you how you can animate that and make it appear from the water and let's say this is the final position this is where I want my logo to end and how high I want the extrusion to be from the water so I'm going to uh, apply on top of this layer I'm going to apply a couple of effects one a color correction levels and the second one I'm going to apply a blur just a fast blur I'll put the blur first I'll give it a value of one you can see it looks a lot smoother already and what I'm going to animate is I'm going to animate the blurriness and I'm going to animate the histogram and levels basically the I'm going to clip the white and the black and um, I will create actually I'll just move the keyframes that I've created at about six or even seven almost seven seconds there we go 624 and then I'll animate this from the beginning I'll I, I'll just bring this back here a few frames back so you can see better see what happens is if I take the blurriness to 20 let's say uh, this looks a lot more organic just like the logo starting to 
form from the water and if I just play with the levels and clip the white clip the black that'll uh, obviously lower the extrusion and the logo seems like it's just starting to come out of the water so combining these two should be able to create a interesting way of um, making the logo come out of the water and I'm going to move these two keyframes in the beginning and then another thing that I'll do is I'll copy this layer I'm not going to animate the position so um, there's not more I, I will do with it uh, but if you want to animate the position I'll do that before um, this step I'm, I'm going to copy this layer and then go back and open my water texture map paste the layer in here and change the colors of the layer to the colors I want the layer the logo to have let's say I want to deep orange deep darker orange in the middle and I want you to see how that color is affected in my main comp that's because of uh, the reflection map and the colors in the reflection map if you change that that'll also uh, affect the way the logo looks just something to keep in mind uh, but since it's a night scene uh, this is how the colors should be affected by the moon and um, the dark sky uh, and the water and then the outline I would like to change this to let's say just a light yellow and this is how my logo looks like and I'm going to go to eight seconds And actually go back a few frames from here and set the opacity here to 100. I'm going to get rid of the fast blur and the levels because I don't need these in this comp. And go back to about 7 and bring the opacity down to 0. Because I, want, I just want the texture to come towards just towards the very end of my animation. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to render this and we can take a look at it, see how, uh, how this turned out. All right, let's see how uh, this is going to look like. You can see how it's starting to appear out of the water, really nice and smooth. And then the texture comes towards the very end. I hope this has been... Um, useful tutorial and uh, you guys have um, uh, great ideas uh, after seeing this and can't wait to hear from uh, you how uh, your uh, projects will turn out using uh, these techniques and uh, freeform pro together with the aqua pack uh, thanks for watching and uh, obviously uh, look out for the third tutorial in uh, the aqua pack basic series or Freeform Pro. This is Tutor Ted Jalescu signing out.